Well, welcome everyone. My name is Sarah Horton Deutsch and I am the director of the Watson Carrying Science Center at the University of Colorado. And this afternoon, I have invited um, Dr. Neil Rosenberg and Dr. Lisa Goldberg to talk to me about innovations and in inquiry in um, nursing education and, and caring science. So I'd like to welcome both of you and um, all of those who have joined us from afar and ask both Neil and Lisa to take turns introducing themselves. Um, Neil, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Sarah. Um, it's wonderful to be here. My name is Neil Rosenberg, and I'm the Dean and an Associate Professor in the School of Nursing at Nevada State College um, in Henderson, the Henderson, Las Vegas, uh, Nevada area. So I'm completing my postdoc uh, fellowship with uh, Sarah and Jean Watson in I'll finish in July, I suppose. So it's been, uh, it's a two year journey of really, really diving into the caring sciences with experts and uh, it's been a wonderful experience. So I'm happy to be here to share. Great, thanks Neil. And Lisa? Yes, uh, I'm just delighted to be here and uh, hello to everyone and certainly to um, Sarah and Jan and Neil. I'm Lisa Goldberg and I'm an associate professor in the School of Nursing at Dalhousie University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. So I'm the opposite end of the world almost from Neil in North America. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a Caritas coach and I completed the program. It'll be, I think, two years in uh, October. And uh, it's been quite transformative for me, both personally and professionally. And so this has been a real joy to participate tonight and continue this journey. So thank you so much, Sarah, for inviting me. You're both very welcome. And I'd like to um, welcome Jan Anderson, who is actually um, the lead faculty for the Caritas Coach Program. Jan, could you quickly say hi and say something about the Caritas Coach Program? Yes. Hi, everyone. We're so glad you're here with us. We just love to share what we uh, is our passion in life, I think. And I'm on the chat. So if you go at the bottom of your screen and just put your cursor or whatever under uh, towards the bottom of the photos, you'll see chat. So if you have a question, we'll try to have a question answer period towards the end. Um, Caritas Coach Program is a six month program and it's a, it's a deep dive into a caring science. So um, if you're interested in that, I can give you more information too. So welcome. Great, thanks Jan. Well, I think we'll get started. Lisa, can you take a few minutes to share how you integrate caring science into education as well as your practice at your institution? Certainly, I'd love to do that. Um, I finished the program, as I mentioned, in October of 2014. And, and the transformation for me certainly was from a personal place. Um, and so I, I thought about now, how am I going to integrate that into my professional practices? And I began first with the project I did out of the Caritas Coach Program. And that was at the graduate level. And I didn't ask to do this. I just did it. So they couldn't say no to me. <laughs> That's really key. Just do it. Um, I, I transformed my graduate class in nursing philosophy um, to a caring science uh, framework. And so a magical transition really happened there. So the class began with uh, a meditation. We took the first hour of the three hour course in circle and I would bring in beautiful Caritas coach, car Caritas cards, Zen cards, healing cards. And we'd go around the room and there were distant students as well. So we'd go back and forth between those offsite and those onsite introducing the week through these beautiful cards. Uh, and the feedback was just absolutely marvelous because students talked about graduates graduate studies being very lonely, even in nursing. Mm -hmm. And so they felt this class was the one class where they really felt connected and authentic. And they were learning um, theoretical frameworks, but it was also very experiential and lived. And so some of the feedback I got was even things like, not only did it revive them in terms of their professional practice as a nurse, also as a mother, a father, a parent, a sister, a mother. And I had never heard anything like that before mm -hmm. from evaluations in a philosophy class. So that was really quite thrilling. 
at the undergraduate level, I think is probably one of the most exciting things for me is we piloted a, a clinical, a community health clinical in, in LGBTQ health, which is lesbian, bisexual, transgender, uh, which was really quite innovative. But what I did, and, and I'm not sure the students quite fully understood this, but I, I underpinned it with caring science. And so a big piece of it was this beautiful self-reflexive piece, which really came from a place of compassion and loving kindness. So if you're dealing with areas of practice across difference that can at times be very uncomfortable or fearful for students if they're not accustomed to doing that. If you begin with compassion as part of your reflexive place, something really wonderful happens in that people can be uncomfortable in terms of students and the educator, including myself. But if that space is trusting and relational, you can have positive as well as challenging conversations. And that in fact is one of the caritas processes. So what's wonderful about caring science is that the caritas processes, all 10 of them can be lived on a daily basis in your professional practices as well as your personal practices. And that was something for me that became part of every day of my journey as an academic once I finished the program, as well as me personally figuring out different things for myself in terms of shifts of how I engaged in the world. It became a living, breathing extension of who I was. You know, it's not something you put on and take off every day. It's something you live in the world. It's not perfect every day, but it's something that you are being and becoming on a regular basis. Oh, gosh, thank you, Lisa. That is just beautiful. I too, in working with graduate and undergraduate students have seen those, those shifts and those transformations um, away from just thinking of their, their roles as something they're doing, but a way of being in their practice and, and um, being both personally and professionally in their lives. And you spoke about that so eloquently. I appreciate that. Um, Neil, can you, um, Tell us a little bit about your caring science um, education and practices at Nevada State. Sure, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, I think that the the best place to start is is with this with the self for me that uh, it was sort of an epiphany that you know I always identified myself as as a as a nurse educator as a researcher, and I found myself um, I guess six years ago in in a leadership role and. I really sort of have resisted embracing that fully because I always feel that I'm more aligned as a faculty member or as a researcher. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the last year and a half, I suppose, with this immersion that I'm doing is the space is good. I think that I am able to enact and to provide the space and have the greatest amount of change in a leadership role. So I really, really struggled with that. And by embracing that and moving forward, what I'm finding is um, here at Nevada State, particularly, uh, I mean, I'm very, very lucky to work, work with one of the most talented, open, receptive faculties that I've, I've ever experienced. So that makes my job relatively easy. But working with them um, and just providing the space, providing the, the resources, providing the opportunities to to move in this direction of modeling caring science, not just with self, with, but with our students, um, that's been huge uh, as far as providing them with uh, with that with the space. Now to get there, um, you have to have resources. You have to also have buy-in from executive leadership. And we've been very successful here with, uh, with the caring sciences as we're rolling out a revised curriculum that will uh, be out in fall of 2017, where the faculty own this. I sort of have been there uh, to facilitate in some points, to redirect in some points, but really, and very challenging, is really just to listen um, because the faculty own the curriculum. And when they need my input, they certainly will call upon me. But for me, we met just a couple days ago and it was beautiful because I actually see um, 
you know, I hesitate to say they don't really need me at this point. Uh, it's really, really good to kind of have that feeling because you see the work we've done over the last couple of years, they own it now mm-hmm. and they're moving forward. And it's going to be a beautiful product for our nursing students who are uh, enrolled starting in the fall. So there's that as well as also providing the opportunities for personal growth. We have uh, three Caritas coaches. We're sending three more. So at the end of this academic year, we'll have um, six Caritas coaches on our faculty, uh, which is huge. We need to be able to, to, to have that credibility, not just with our peers, but also with our students. So I'm able to provide those opportunities for the faculty. Um, so those are just some of the things, and these are easy things for me. And I guess I don't, I wonder why I resisted and I didn't embrace this role sooner because I love, I love being a faculty member. I love being a researcher, but what I see happening right now, in particular here in Nevada, uh, with caring sciences and with this faculty and with the students, it's just transformational and it's beautiful. And for me, it's about being comfortable in this space and the caring sciences have uh, brought me to be mm-hmm. at that place. Mm-hmm. Well, tell me a little bit about when you first came into your role as a dean, um, were the faculty, how did you introduce the idea of caring science or was it already there? So I was lucky when I, when I arrived here, the, the curriculum is already, I, I'll say loosely structured um, in the caring sciences. So very, very early within my arrival here, we as a faculty, as a group, we sat down and we looked at it and we said, okay, if we're going to continue in this direction, um, we have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. So I really asked them, do you want to do this work? Are you up for this work? How are we going to do this work? And I think all except for maybe one faculty member, um, you know, and it's about fit and, you know, she's over here, uh, decided, yes, this is important to us. We want to do this. So it was slowly providing the opportunities. We would start each of our, our department meetings off with centering. Mm-hmm. So it was living what we're talking about. Um, mm-hmm. The quiet space of centering after a busy day of work. How do we connect with each other as peers and respect the differences and realize we're actually stronger because of the differences? They don't, they're not barriers. Mm -hmm. The faculty, they were anxious, they were eager. But once again, I have to note, Sarah, that this is a very unique faculty. Um, And I think that uh, they were ready for this change. Mm -hmm. And now, fast forward, we're in our third year. uh, It just has gained incredible momentum. And like I said, now I go to the meetings, but maybe it's a good thing. I don't, they do, they do most of the talking. Right. Yeah, beautiful. I have one more for question for you, and then I'm going to open it up for um, questions from our audience because I know people have probably have a lot of questions for Lisa as a um, a teacher and faculty member on a daily basis, as well as you from your leadership experience. My last question for you is: I know that you also have um, ac- our community partners and clinical partners that are also. Um, I organized around caring science. And if you could say just a little bit about how those partnerships have, have allowed you to carry caring science from the classroom into the clinical setting. Sure, I'd be happy to. We're very, very proud of that. So we partnered, we just finished our one-year celebration. So we finished our, our first year of partnering um, with a, a local hospital here, Centennial Hills Hospital Medical Center. And we have uh, now, I believe, six units that are are marked as caring science units. So we took the traditional dedicated education unit, the DEU, and we infused into it the caring sciences in Dr. Watson's work. And by doing that, we started with one floor and this was led by uh, two faculty members. So, you know, I was early on initiated this with the CNO and then quickly brought on the faculty who have been instrumental in this success, as well as the staff nurses at the hospital. So what we do is we, we have a, a traditional model and we share, it's a bi-directional uh, learning opportunity where the staff nurses are actually care uh, coaches. So they work with our students and the students have the opportunity to spend their entire four semesters at that hospital on a different caring science unit. So they'll go from med surge one caring science to med surge two. So at the end of their two years, the hospital, um, they have a new graduate that's ready 
to stay. They've been in the culture. They've worked. There's a real sense of um, of commitment by the staff nurses. They become very protective of these nursing students. And the sharing of knowledge, because oftentimes the staff nurses, they're not familiar with Dr. Watson's work and how do we bring this alive and what does it look like on the, in the clinical setting? So we like to say that we really are, are bridging that academic clinical um, landscape with these unique clinical academic partnerships. Uh, so we'll be rolling this out to our second uh, hospital in January mm-hmm. and it, a different system. We're getting all sorts of requests from the CNOs in, in wow. Southern Nevada. They all want a caring science unit. And, you know, I try to explain to them, it's, you know, we just don't order these. There's a yeah. lot of work <laughs> and a lot of educating that goes into it, but we could not be more pleased with the, with the reception that we're receiving and hearing in the community, the difference in our nursing students and, and what they're doing. Um, we have some very friendly, competitive uh, schools here in the Valley and to hear, oh, that's a Nevada State nursing student. I can, I can just see it. I can, I can feel it. Our work is, is it's, it's working. Mm-hmm. Great, great. Well, I'm going to pause and see if we have any questions. Jan, do we have any questions from our partic- listeners? You know, I just have one, but I haven't read it, but I'm, I was wondering what your experience was with um, students in terms of how they're uh, appreciating or accepting or embracing caring science as a, a non-traditional way of teaching your thing. Lisa, Lisa, you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, you know, it's interesting because sometimes I, I love to come right out and ask things like, what do you think of the the language of using love in in both a a nursing and academic setting? And I always am uh, fascinated by the responses of that because that is it, it really quite powerful and featured quite prominently in Dr. Watson's work and something that I've become very fond of and, and very much engaged in thinking about and. And so usually the reaction to that language is first, typically, no, because everyone always goes to romantic love. Mm -hmm. And and so it's fascinating because that's how our culture often sees love. Mm -hmm. But then when we begin to discuss it more in the broader context of how it's situated within caring science, It's so fascinating to begin to see that shift of how they can see, yes, love is a part of what we do, particularly when we begin to also talk about nursing as sacred. Mm -hmm. And there is such an honor uh, in doing what it is we do. And so often I find that caring science is one of those wonderful ways of being that is not abstracted from practice, but Mm -hmm. rather is very much practice. And it simply takes some ongoing engagement and dialogue and modeling Mm -hmm. for students to begin to see that. And I I have something exciting that's happening the middle of October. I was invited to speak at the Canadian Nurses uh, Students Association Conference, which is being held this year in Halifax. So there'll be 150 to 200 nursing students. And it's on diversity. I'm so proud of the students that that's the focus. And so they asked me to talk about the queer birthing phenomenological research I do. And I said, oh, that would be wonderful, but I have a much better talk. (laughs) (laughs) And I said, what about... um, you know, LGBTQ invisibility in nursing and caring science as a, as a wonderful way to redress that Mm -hmm. moving forward. And they thought that was wonderful. So again, it's, it's helping people see that this is just a wonderful way for us to shift who we are Mm -hmm. and simply takes reminding people or educating people, particularly our students and faculty Mm -hmm that this really is the way forward. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. And I have one more question that came in for either one of you. Can you share how you infuse caring science into coursework that traditionally is quite scientific in nature, such as pathophysiology or pharmacology? 
Well, I, I can't speak to that because I don't teach any of those courses. Uh, I still, I think there definitely is ways to do that, but that's not something I teach. So uh, I, I think it probably would be in partly in an approach. So one thing I can speak to just generally, and then I'll pass over to Neil, my way of being with students has shifted. So it really wouldn't matter what I was teaching substantively. So for example, talking about collectively, how we, you know, what kind of schedule do we want assignments on? And does this work for everyone? There's ways of shifting that. When, when students can't get assignments in on time, how do we engage that in a way that honors the students and the kinds of stress that their schedules entail, yet recognizes that if they get too behind, they don't catch up. Mm -hmm. So how do we engage that? And simply shifting the way you engage a class to a type of learning that is um, respectful and co-creates a classroom where students feel a safe, trusting space mm -hmm. to really engage everything they love to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Neil, what about you? Any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I agree with Lisa that the faculty member has the opportunity to really um, to create what that what that classroom is going to look like and and wonderful things can come from that. I can tell you that I don't teach those two courses either. However, Tuesday we were in work groups as we're moving forward with the revised curriculum that's each course will have measurable outcomes, course outcomes that are all uh, connected to Dr. Watson's work in the caring sciences. So that's what we're most proud of. So that absolutely includes pathophysiology and pharmacology. So it's just listening to that group talk on, on how are we going to do this? What is a measurable outcome in pathophysiology anchored to the caring sciences? So some of the things that I heard were, um, so we talk about disease processes from the cellular level, and that can be done very, very well and it's very in a very scientific manner but our role as nurse educators is then to step in and what is it like to be present what is it like to be visible mm -hmm. with that patient in your formal or informal role as a giving care providing care um a lot of times what what i'll hear is you know students are so task driven is taking them back away from that task and skill uh, driven approach and and reminding them that what we we know we're successful if you understand for starting an IV, I would rather them know when to start it, how to start it, and why to start it. If you only have two IV sticks in your entire time with us as a nursing student, it's not the end of the world. You have ample time to learn that. But being present with your patient mm -hmm. and why you're going to start that IV, how you're going to do it, those are things that are more important to us in our role. So I do believe that the caring science, the philosophy of what we do can very easily be um, incorporated into these highly technical or scientific courses. And as this rolls out next year, whoever has that question, please reach out to us, send us an email. Uh, we would love to share what we're doing here. We, we don't want it to just house here. We want it to go out everywhere. So um, reach out to us. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jan, I just like to add um, a little bit to that in my own experience. And I think Marsha Hills and Jean Watson both talk about in their caring curriculum book. And it's really an emphasis not so much on what you teach, but how you teach. Mm -hmm. And it's that are you having students practice in the classroom? And are you modeling the way, like Lisa talked about? Are you modeling authentic dialogue and openness? Do students feel safe in your classroom? And are you really engaging in that authentic dialogue with them? Mm -hmm. And do you include, when you evaluate them and assess their learning, are you including um, affirmation and confirmation and it's speaking to them developmentally developmentally from here's where you started and here's where you've come so that you're looking at them each as an individual and so all of those um, are really important components of a caring curriculum and um, sometimes we might think there that that seems a little more challenging in a 
in a um, course that has requires a lot of skill. But really, then we need to focus on how we do something as well as what we do and keep that in balance. As I think it's Maya Angelou that said, people may not remember what you said, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. Mm-hmm. So um, that's an important point, uh, essential component of caring science. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, and for those listening, I know our students have have revised curriculums at all level, from CNA to LVN to ADN to and above. Um, so it has been done and can be done, and so that's one thing that uh, you need to know. There's plenty of work being done out there, and as Neil said, we want to share it. So one more, if you have, do we have time for one more question, Sarah? Well, I think we have time for one more question. Okay. So this is a question for Neil. How visible is caring science in your curriculum and program philosophy to prospective students considering Nevada State? That's a great question. Well, hopefully, if we have interested uh, students and families, they'll come to our website and uh, the first place that they may land will be on their welcome from from the dean, from me. And uh, in that welcome, it's very, very clear and very front and center our vision and the direction that we're moving. Uh, once you get past that, uh, I believe that you'll see in, in the manner in which uh, our curriculum is currently laid out. If you look at the bios on some of our faculty members and their Caritas coaches, things of that, ma- that matter, I think that you will see that um, we really, really we believe that the faculty are there to model these behaviors and the students that find their way to us. Um, we hear all the time. It's like, I had no idea that this was here, that this is, this is so refreshing. It's very different. Mm-hmm. So as we move forward with the revised curriculum, I anticipate that it will be even more front and center, but we do share with our prospective students. Uh, they take Nurse 100, which is um, the Art of Nursing course, where we introduce Dr. Watson's work and a, and a few other theorists. Um, and those are pre-nursing students, so they're not in our program yet. And we spend, a, 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 I've taught that course a few times, and we spend time sharing with them the uniqueness of our our program. It may not be for every nursing student, but we're very transparent with what we're doing and where we're going. And, you know, for instance, Jan, even in the, the, traditional skills lab. It's our, it's our arts lab now. And I walk in there and I see students practicing uh, reflexology on each other's hands. So these modules, we have invested the time and the energy where they're high stakes. If you cannot identify the pressure points for reflexology, not that we're training reflexologists, but when you are with your patient, that you need to be aware of their condition. And with touch, what are just some nursing interventions you can do? Aromatherapy, um, all of those pieces that we share with our prospective students, it becomes very clear if this is the right fit or not. And what we're finding from the interest in our programs is it's, a, it's a, the right fit for a lot of people. And mm-hmm. we're happy, really happy with that. That's amazing. Go ahead, sir. Well, thank you. I just want to express my deep gratitude to uh, Neil and Lisa and Jan for the last 30 minutes. This has been amazing. Um, and I appreciate you all so much because this is a, uh, a movement and a Caritas conspiracy that we want to continue to grow. And um, if anyone can heal the world, I, I really believe it is nursing through caring science. So thank you all. And then I just want to reemphasize that we do have more caring science programs coming up. We have webinars um, quarterly, but there is an international Caritas consortium in Boston, October 28th to the 30th. And um, if you'd like to learn more about the Caritas Coach Education Program, you can go to the Watson Caring Science Center website and learn more. You can also reach out to Jan or I or any of the panelists, Neil or Lisa, we're all happy to talk with you. So thank you again for the last uh, wonderful 30 minutes, and I look forward to seeing you all soon.